All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to today's Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream. We are in the Junkers 52, continuing our journey to Indonesia, the former Dutch East Indies on this 1930s KLM route that originated out of Amsterdam. Today we are heading from Alar Sitar to the Republic of Singapore to the, it's an air base now, this particular airport here, Paya Labar, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, it's an air base right now. This used to be the original airport for um, Singapore a long time ago. So this is their new main airport here. Three runways can handle, looks like much larger aircraft. So uh, we're going to come into land here. So basically we kind of go over the route for today. I'll see if who, who's going to pop in the chat. So we're going to take off from runway 22. We're going to head out. Uh, we're going to follow 22 for a bit. And then we're going to turn on a heading of 189. Yep, 189. And we're going to head down to this airport here on this little uh, island. Okay. Then we're going to turn, and this is going to be the largest, longest part of our, of our trip right here. This entire, uh, this leg right here. Till we get to this point here and, after, and that's another airport there uh after that uh we're going to turn one more time this is the i think the second longest yep this is a hundred and two nautical miles this leg and then from here it's it's pretty much a straight or you know it'll be fairly straightforward we're going to head here and then we're going to turn in and land on we're going to use the ils frequency right here Make sure we are lined up for our approach. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the flight will not take five and five and a half hours, almost six hours. Okay, so I don't want people to think that oh my god, I I can't watch this whole thing or I can't be here for the whole thing. Be here for whatever you want to watch. Uh, I get it. I I know. I'm, I'm I'm if I was a betting man, right when we hit TNGs, when everybody's going to pop in. I, I, I'm perplexed by it, but okay. Anyway, um, so only four, about 400 nautical miles, but I think it's going to take us well under five and a half hours to do this whole thing. So um, this leg is supposed to take about two hours to do, this one right here. About 30 minutes to get here. I think we'll get there much quicker to this first nav point here uh, near uh, Penang International. So basically, we're going from Malaysia to the Republic of Singapore okay, for today's flight. Uh, what else? Um, so yeah, if you want, if I'm already in the air, you can join me here. Uh, you could. I think there's nope, that's not an airport. You could. Uh, there's a couple of. Yeah, there's some other small... Oh, I forgot about this one, WMKF. So there's some airports along the way that you could uh, leave from that you could meet me, you know. There's another airport there. So there's like three airports here. And that's like towards the latter, pretty much the second half of the flight. So anyway, uh, let's see, yeah. We'll wait a little bit longer, see if anybody is going to pop in. I don't believe that will be the case. But we'll see if we have any anybody who is going to pop in and say, hey, wait for me. So, so in the meantime, I'm going to sip my coffee and we will we'll get ready to go here soon. I'm going to adjust the time for a morning flight. Um, so that way we should have 
more than enough light for the entire flight. I was going to try to do an afternoon flight, but I figured I'd probably goof that up and it would be, a, uh, we'd run out of, run out of the sunlight before we got to Singapore, so. And for the weather today, we have some, just a few clouds. And just to make things interesting as far as our navigating and where we are, um, as long as we can still kind of see where, you know, certain features or whatever, I can pretty much know where, where we're at of the flight at any given time. Got my stopwatch all ready. For for our for timing our legs to make sure we are where we need to be when we need to be there. So now this is near. There's there's an airport here, but I don't know. It's not named. I wonder if it's an old airport that's no longer in use. No, that's Malacca. Okay. It's just not showing in the sim. In the sim, it's like it's not it's not open or it's not usable or something. But on Sky Vector, the, on the chart, on the route that I have planned, this is an open airport. As far as I can tell. So, yeah, interesting. I wonder if it's a military airfield and they just didn't include it for some reason. Huh. Oh well. That's all right. Yeah, and this is Oh boy, I just had a sneezing fit. Sorry. Yeah, this is spelled wrong on the chart. It's M-A-L-A-C-C-A. -C -C -A. But here it's spelled differently. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Let's see if anybody is here yet. Nope. Got a couple viewers. He's saying hello. Boo. Anything. All righty then. Let's see if I notice any names. Nope. I do not recognize anybody that has flown with me before. Uh, so anyway, um, we'll wait a few more minutes and I'm going to spawn in and we'll, we'll get ready to go. Let's back this up just, oops. Oh, nope, 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 that's not what I want. Why is it so dark at Seems kind of dark for eight o'clock in the morning. But okay. <sighs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna take one more quick break and then we'll spawn in and get ready to go, folks.
All right, gonna run one one more commercial break real quick, and then we'll I'm gonna spawn in. We'll get started. Sorry, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just spawn in on the departure runway here. <clears throat> and uh, get, uh, get set to go. Not. Oh, crap, I forgot to change that. Oops, a daisy. Okay, we got it. Well, I can't change the change the time that's for sure there that'll work and I need fuel we gotta tank up oh we gotta put every drop we can in the tanks Yo, and we need to dial in our first one one six two zero. Hmm, excuse me. Okay, so all of our lights are on. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can change the. Uh, Miscellaneous or something? No. It used to be there was a different way you could access that once you started the flight. Oh well. <laughs> That's the one thing I forgot to do. That's fine. All right. Get the stopwatch set. Oh, for the lights are on. Yep. There we go. Oh, we got a two, two, three. All right, there we go. And all timber should be all set. Yep. Yep. And yep. Perfect. All right.
All right. It's almost time, folks. All right, let's go. this morning right off the bat do that there we go Oh, we already got our perfect. So this is leg 29 of the flight to Indonesia, Monday, Tuesday, oh, a week from today, we will be landing in our final destination in Indonesia, wrapping up this journey that started way back in April, I do believe, if I remember correctly, does my, does my memory deceive me? No, April 21st is when we started this journey.
Even a mixture a bit here. So I think where that A20N is, that's our, that should be where our first nav point is right there. Looks like he's sitting on that, at that airport. DME, so I'm surprised we're not picking up, uh, not hearing the beeping of the three letter code. But our arrow's already pointing us the right direction, so that's a good thing. I'm just going to glance every so often since I got five lurkers and nobody wants to say anything. So I'm just going to look over every so often. If anybody says anything, I'll respond. But anyway, I hope everybody's having a good day. Hope we enjoy the flight. So once we wrap things up a week from today, uh, once we land in Indonesia, I'm going to take a bit of time off.
So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I think uh, I'm going to take about almost two weeks off. Um, it'll give me time to practice a little bit more with the Concorde without worrying about a streaming schedule. Um, try to fly a little bit more with Captain Arish, uh, Arish and then uh, also maybe on Saturdays with Allison and Captain Arish on their uh, journey with on the uh, Amelia Earhart flight. Um, I've, I will be flying, it's just that I'm not going to be streaming during that time. Part of it is because Sim Update 10 will be out, and I don't know what will work and what won't. Uh, there's a you know, period of time, it seems, where... Oh, is that the airport we're heading over? It's not the name that I know it as. Good morning, Amela. First person to say something in the chat. Amela, win, you win a prize. You go get yourself a cookie. <laughs> or a croissant. There you go. Go get yourself a croissant for being the first one to say something in the chat this morning. Hopefully you're well. I had, I made a little bit of pasta last night for dinner. It, it got cool. It cooled down a little bit last night surprisingly it was nice uh but now it's kind of it already feels muggy this morning but yeah i was able to make a little pasta for dinner last night yeah, yeah go reward yourself amela i mean there's, it's like i've been talking to myself for the last 33 minutes <laughs> All right, we've been on the air 13 minutes, roughly. We started stopwatch once we started rolling. Um, so it looks like we're almost near our first nav point. Now, the calculation was it was going to take about... Wait, I'm on, I'm on the wrong page. All right. Uh, 29 minutes, but I think we we're going to get there well before that. So, which is which is fine. We're we're doing good on time. I think the um well, I've, like I've been, like I said the other day, I've used that E6B. I'm okay. Yeah, just it was nice that it cooled down a little bit last night. It was nice and relaxing, and I watched. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been I've been rewatching the the movie Moneyball. Uh. Not, not that I see anything different every time I watch it. I just, it's just, uh, I, it's a interesting story, but it's also like trying to figure out what did they dramatize in the movie to make it seem more interesting, and what was actually the truth. You know, what was, because uh, it did seem like they took some liberties with the story to make it more dramatic you know yeah it was it was nice it was nice and cool last night so that helped out quite a bit got to talk to Doris last night finally Yeah, everything's good. Just uh, plugging away here. Let's see if we had any surprise. Nope.
turn the light up done, didn't I? Yeah, okay. It must not be thrown out. For some reason, it's not giving us a, a three letter Morse code for Victor Papa Golf. I almost said Juliet, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I'll look at it two different things or something at the same time. Anyway. So, yeah, they're right where that A20N is. That's That's got to be our. The airport we're gonna fly over for our first nav point. So, uh, I used to watch Netflix. No, I have a free Hulu account until like another couple weeks. So you get the it's like you get it with commercials. So which is fine. It's not like you miss anything or they they edit it down for time and and content or anything. So. No, it's it's just you get a like a minute twenty commercial or something like that. So, but yeah, I've been rewatching it quite a bit lately. I don't know why. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the Oakland A's by any stretch of the imagination. I, I did just find the whole story interesting because I I remember. That, that period of time in in baseball in the Bay Area, the whole Moneyball thing and, and the what they were trying to do and that it, it didn't seem like it was going to work. Um, well, but it did in, in the you know, Boston Red Sox. At the end of the movie, they talk about it. The Boston Red Sox used the same philosophy that he had championed in Oakland and won the World Series. So it, it does work. It is possible to do. It's just that the, you know, the baseball elite don't like, uh, aren't particularly fond of the Bill James model and of baseball and how he understands and uses statistics and, and all that to to show, you know, a quality player who many people don't uh, quite think are quality players. No, so I so what happened was on, on I had a two month free subscription on Hulu through Xbox. You know, you have the game, or, uh, you know, you get your daily rewards or whatever, and I earned enough, and it's like, oh, you can have two free months, so I'm like, cool. Well, when I tried to cancel it, because I was like, well, I got my two free months, and I'm not, but I don't want to pay for a subscription. <laughs> well, <laughs> I kept looking, and what it turned out to be was I was looking under the wrong account, because I had a previous uh, Hulu account, but I changed, I updated it and had a new you know, um, I put it under a different email address. So I was like looking, I'm like, I can't cancel it. So they, of course they charge you like 12 bucks or something like that. I'm like, no. So, uh, I had to call them and say, look, I, you know, I got this and I don't, I don't want to pay for it anymore. And the person on the other side, other end of the line for the customer service said, that's fine. You can use the, the paid account through the rest of this uh through the rest of it was like july yeah and then up by august 26 i have to cancel everything otherwise they'll charge me again oh i i i don't remember i think it was just that i couldn't remember which one i used so i just created a new account basically using a different email address so um so they're like, yeah, that one hasn't had any activity on it for quite some time. So I was like, oh, well, now we, now I know that it's, uh, yeah, so that's fun. Yeah, it was just, uh, so yeah, I, I have to, I had to remind myself, like, uh, I put a reminder on the calendar that on, by this date in August, I need to, it's like the 23rd, I need to cancel it because if I wait to the 26th, I'm going to forget. 
and then I'll get charged on the 27th for I'm like, no, I don't I, I use there is a free I think it's called Tubely or something like that it's a free streaming service it does have commercials uh, they have a lot of movies they you know uh, different TV shows and stuff so but it, it doesn't cost you anything but they have ads to keep it free so I'm like well I can live it's just the ads are it's not like a traditional ad like you see on normal TV where it's like the farmers commercials or State Farm or, or any you know any number of things it's on Tubely, it's the same stuff over and over, and after a while, you're just like, why am I seeing this? You know, I get it. You know, can we can we see a different ad? <laughs> so, anyway. All right, so there is our first nav point down there. There's the airport. So we're going to fly over that VORDME there. Yep, we made this about, looks like it's going to be about six minutes quicker than expected and then we're going to turn on a heading of one four i think that's one four two is it one four seven one four seven can't read my own chicken scratch sometimes uh well they come like when you if you're watching like a tv show they come at the normal well like on hulu they come during the no where it would be like a normal ad break Ooh, I need to get the throttle just a smidge. That's where it would normally show up. But on Tubely, it's like it doesn't do that. It'll it'll just kind of come in out of out of the blue, and then you're just like It's weird because they'll do the ad break and then the spot where the normal ad break would be, it comes like two minutes after that, and you're just like, why didn't they just adjust their so I don't know. It's it's strange, but um, but if you can live with that, it's it's not a bad sort. You know, like you could download it, or you know, like I have it on my Xbox, and so like you just log in, like you do any other streaming service, and then you can have your playlists and saved movies or whatnot. And, All right. Yep. There we are. And our yeah, it it does me as well. But I'm like, it's free, so I'm not going to complain. Uh, first one is at WMKP. WMKP. International Malaysia. I just need to see where that VOR is. And it's at the. Oh, it's at the tail end of the runway. Right there. Okay. So it's like right. Where is it? So it's like right here. Right about there somewhere. And we'll turn on heading here in a moment. This will be uh, this will be the longest part of the flight, but yeah. So we're getting here about four minutes ahead of schedule. So we're just going to cross over that, and then we'll turn on the heading of one four seven. Reset the chronometer. We fly over that. Reset that. All right. All right. So. 
740. All right, here we are. Hmm. Yeah, so we got there about three minutes ahead of schedule, so, or maybe it was four, about three and a half close to four minutes but that's better than the the 20 so far so good Bex we just uh we hit our first nap point we're turning on our longest leg of 216 nautical miles so we had a nice bit of sunrise flight so far although it's like late evening there so hopefully you are well doing fine Just cruising along in our trimotor aircraft <laughs> see I don't think we're gonna get a that needles not gonna point until almost halfway to that I could be wrong Sometimes this, it surprises me because it's like sometimes we get the signal right away and other times it's like it's a it takes about three quarters into the leg to get get the signal to pop up and the needle to point us in the right direction. Yes, young Mr. Addies is at the go kart place today. New batteries. I don't know. So, Amela, I saw, uh, thanks to Joe, uh, the uh, pending, um, no, uh, it, well, it's like a, I don't know, he goes, it's almost like a, it feels like it's a work, um, what's it called, like a job experience, but he doesn't get paid, uh, uh oh, one Jody, uh, good, glad to Got your gaming laptop sorted. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yes, Train Sim World Three. I saw the uh, uh, Joe did the announcement. It's like him. Uh, there was like a bunch of people that were talking about it last night. The announcement for Train Sim World Three. It does look amazing. Not gonna lie, it does look a lot better. Uh, the the dynamic weather and and all that looks amazing. I am I am shocked that they finally got after you know for quite some time people were asking ab about BNSF you know to be in the sim and they were very they they basically said um, you know they couldn't do it because it's you know. BNSF was very protective of their intellectual property, being the the logo and the the livery schemes and all that. So I don't. Uh, they must have really paid a huge sum of money. I'm thinking in order to secure that deal. So I'm wondering if they've lost a deal with somebody else, and they they were looking for a replacement. Yeah, it does. I 
I tried to look for some more information about it. I couldn't uh, find any anything like if you go to like I Google Dovetail Games Train Sim World Three. I didn't get a link to the actual Dovetail Game site that shows all the particular information, the pricings, and all that. Um, I don't know. It's it's an interesting idea. You know, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. Mr. Squirrel's out and about today, looking for food, looking for love in all the wrong places, maybe. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Amela. I'm, I'm thinking about it, but... Well... I don't know. I, I, I haven't really... I, I did cross my mind. Well, see, the thing is... The, uh, this is what I see happen. It, with Train Symbol... It happened a lot in Train Symbol 2. Right. All the people, you know, like uh, Joe and uh, what's his name? Megasim. That's it. Megasim. And, and there's, you know, certainly others, but those are the first two that come to my mind. Um, they all do, you know, um, they all spend, they as soon as it's out they're on it all day for like 13 hours straight or something like that right and it's like there's this massive influx of streamers or like oh the new game and, and so everybody's doing it so part of it is how do you um How do you do something like that in the midst of all this uh, yeah um, the, the all this how do you set yourself apart amongst all the other streamers you are going to be talking about it around about the same time right so I don't know I, I don't know that my take would be any different. You know, um, you know, or I don't know. You know, I. You know, it's kind of like when somebody suggested that I become a a wedding photographer. Well, there's a ton of wedding photographers out there. The, di the thing is, how do you separate yourself from everybody else? Otherwise, it's a very competitive market. You know, and. The people who get those jobs are usually well established, you know. So uh, it's it's an oversaturation, you know. That's that's part of it. You know, like every time a new route comes out, people spend oh we're going to be on here for like eight hours straight. So you, after like the third or fourth day, you're like, okay, can we go see something different now? No, we're in, like okay, well. There's more roots. Yeah, but this is the new shiny toy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's just a very, I don't know, strange. So, yeah, I, I don't know, you know, like, I know Joe's take's going to be different because he's an ambassador for this for Dovetail Games and the Train Sim World Two community or Train Simming community in general. Um, so his take will be, you know, much uh, in line with that. You know, of course they they hope that he encourages people to uh, to uh, to buy the game. Um, we're not just well like game pass you get this base edition for free which is good i think that's the smart way to do it and then you can decide if you want to purchase other content 
you know. Um, but yeah, you know, there's that the encouragement to to spend money on the sim and, and uh, buy as much content as possible. Um, I think the prices are fairly reasonable. Yeah. Um, part of it too, though, is is that I'm I'm I'm. Can, oh, there we go. So, almost ten minutes on this part of the leg, and we're we're getting our needle finally. So, ta-da! There we go. It's a good sign. So that's a very powerful VOR DME, I think, if it's reaching out. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about scaling back the, the streaming from seven days a week to only, like, four. And it may, it may mean that some of the theme stuff goes, like, well, the only thing that, the, the theme, two themes that I would keep, Mondays and Wednesdays would be um, the Eucharist 52 flying across America. Thursdays would still be uh, the... Uh, Route 66 flights until we get that completed and then on Fridays would be you know uh, it could be anything you know it could be floater plane flights it could be the Concorde flight whatever it's just you know like a grab bag you know just like hey tomorrow we're you know like it's not going to be something that's planned ahead of time it'll be kind of like uh, a surprise, you know, like, oh, to, well, you know, I don't know about surprise, but it would be something where you would, it's not, there won't be a theme to it necessarily other than, you know, it's just going to be kind of a, tomorrow we're going to fly this plane or, you know, uh, something like that. Because um, I do want to stream the Concord flight. Uh, and I, I think uh, what I'm I'm thinking about doing, I may I may do a surprise. Well, I'm kind of trying to think about when I could do it. But during my brief hiatus from streaming, I'm thinking about if I go in and, and do do a test. Like once I get two flights under my belt from start to finish, you know, take off and landing with very few to no issues at all. I think on the third flight, I may do a stream on it. But it, it I, I'm a bit, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit worried about doing that. And here's why. For those of you who've seen the inside of the, of the Concorde, right, you know there's all these dials, there's all these switches, and there's all kinds of stuff that to do, okay? And how do I... I would like to show everybody the whole startup thing so that you get a sense of, of how it all works. I don't want to just start on the runway and then we're ready to go. I, I want to show the startup, we taxi out, <clears throat> prepare for takeoff, all the things that you have to do. The, the the question or the, the issue I have is how do I do all that and also pay attention to the chat because people are going to see that and they're going to come in and have a gazillion questions possibly I might be wrong but it's it's very likely that people will come in with a whole host of questions about what what it is and what we're doing and you know all that kind of stuff um so I don't know how do I do all that and not be ignoring the chat, you know. Uh, and that would be kind of intentional because it's like, well, there's a lot of switches and I don't want to, to lose my place in the, in the checklist process to, you know, when I look at the chat, you know, and answer questions. So it may just be that 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 first stream is going to be a bit longer and it's like I'm going to have to be very slow and methodical in the process so that I don't miss anything, you know, to try to, to also be 
you know respond to the to the chat if people come in and, and say anything uh so yeah i don't i don't know but yeah i'm thinking about scaling back the streaming instead of seven days just go to four and, um yeah i i just i i feel like it's uh yeah i don't know you know just nothing on saturdays or sundays you know that that would give me time to fly if i fly i could fly with other folks in their streams i don't have to worry about the chat necessarily i could just fly to fly um so yeah i don't know but yeah i'm thinking if i can do if i can test the concord get two flights done start to finish from from jfk to heathrow no major issues then i'll i'll on the third attempt just to make sure that i i have everything down pat it'll just be like a test stream but I, like i said i think that's going to be the one it's going to be a long stream because the startup procedure is not you know uh it's not very simple it's there's just a lot of steps to it and then, you know, you have to go through the checklist through the entire flight because there's things that you have to do at very, at times throughout the flight to move the fuel around. Although that could be automated. We could leave that automatic, but I want to I want to show everybody the complexity of it so that you get a sense before we let some things be automated. So... Because if we automate too much, then I think we lose the sense of the complexity of the of the Concord. Oh, you're off, Amela. Oh, I didn't see you post anything that you were leaving. But okay, <laughs> take care. Don't forget, get yourself a croissant since you were first one in chat. And get one on the way to work <laughs> for the coffee. Take care. Just try to stay cool. So yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of the... Uh, I would like to show everybody the complexity of it so that you get a, a fuller sense of of how the whole thing works. And then we can let stuff be automated the next time around. But that's going to be a, it's going to be a long because it's three and a half hours flying uh, from JFK to Heathrow. I thought it was two and a half. But yeah, it's a. Uh, This thing want to keep climbing. Oh, it finally had calmed down. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I'll have a look at that later, Jody. Tomorrow's flight will be in the Cessna 208B. We have two flights uh, Thursday and Friday in the Cessna 208B in the lovely Pan Am livery. Thursday's flight, we're going from Gainesville, Florida, to Augusta, Georgia. And then Friday, we are going from Schenectady to Rochester. We will be flying in New York. And then Saturday, of course, uh, 
Lightning Saturday. We're departing from Cheyenne to Ainsworth. That one won't be too long of a flight. Uh, only, our longest leg is 115 nautical miles. So, um, so we'll get that done. And then Sunday we'll not be streaming anything. Monday we'll be back in the Junkers 52 to complete our journey to Indonesia. Uh, the next the next official stream will be the 29th of August. Here tomorrow I need VIP seat. <laughs> well, I don't know if there's any VIP seat. You have to talk to Mick about that since he's he's the one of the founding members of the Uncle B Sim channel. You have to clear that with Mick first. He can he can give you an idea of what the uh, about the VIP seating. <laughs> So yeah, uh, first official stream will be back on the 29th of August. We will start our uh, flight around America in the Eucharist 52. We'll have the very bare metaled Eucharist 52 for that flight the entire time. Uh, we're going to use the base model. We're not going to use the retro model. You know, you only have good things to say. <laughs> I don't know, Bex. <laughs> you might go, well, but... <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll get that started. We'll get the flight started in uh, uh, the, uh, the trip uh, down... Um, Route 66. So. Let me just take, take a look. Nope. No surprise visitors there. All right. Um, uh, me, you know, I don't know. Mick is quite, quite happy with the, the, uh, my flying progress over this past year. He might have said in the beginning, oh yeah, it was, it was rough. And it was, I'm not going to lie. It was, a, <clears throat> it was tough, but no, he's. Seems quite happy with the uh, with the flying. All right, 22, almost 23 minutes on this leg so far. Still got a quite a bit of ways to go on the second leg. Let's see. Let's see if I can kind of figure out where we are. All right, there's that. Let me have a look here. I already know roughly where we are. So we should have an airport to our left and right. So we're kind of going right between airports here. But I have an idea where we are. Yep. Okay. Yep. I know exactly where we are. Within reason, of course. So we still got quite a ways to go. So yeah, what's a week from today we will be landing in our final destination in Indonesia. Monday's flight we will depart from you guys are probably gonna listen to a ad. Sorry. I have the information set. We'll wait for the ad to go through and then we'll we'll talk about Monday.
couple of 820N planes in the air today. There's one there, there's one in front of us, although that looks like they're on a runway. So yeah, there should be an airport to either side of us coming up. The one over here might be a little bit harder to pick out, but maybe not. And the other one is... So yeah, we're going to kind of split right down between two airports. I thought... I thought that was going to give a nab break. All right, so Monday, yes, yeah, Singapore to, uh, let me see if I pronounce this correctly. Palembang. We have an eight nautical mile, a whopping 250 nautical mile. And then we're gonna, uh, from there, we're gonna turn in on the localizer DME there at Palembang. From Palembang, we're going to Jakarta on Tuesday whopping 225 nautical mile flight and then on Wednesday uh, Jakarta to Bandung 68 nautical mile that one will be very short uh, we'll wrap that up and then it will it will be off off streaming for a couple weeks so if you wish to uh, re-watch, you can re-watch a lot of the videos here on Twitch. Although, uh, you know, the, they disappear after a short while, I think. And then uh, after that, or you can watch and re-watch stuff over on YouTube. I, when I'm ready to do the third flight, the test flight in the Concorde, uh, I will announce it in the Discord. So... Please make sure you follow the Discord. Um, otherwise, I uh, will. Uh, well, hopefully, you know when I go live here on Twitch. Get the notification. Apparently, sometimes the notifications aren't working. So, but the um, the flight in the Concorde is it's going to be a long stream. I, I'm, I, I think I'm just going to have to um, prepare myself for that because I'm sure a lot of people are going to have a ton of questions which is to be expected when you're in an amazing plane like the Concorde Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm going to try to get the two flights. We'll probably end up being three flights before the test stream with the Concorde. Um, I, yeah, I think I'm going to have to do one flight just to get have an idea of the, the checklist and when I'm supposed to do everything. And then... Um, the uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, where was it going with this? So, yeah, then oh, I know what it is. So, I want it would be like on a let's say on a Tuesday, I do flight from JFK to Heathrow, everything goes well, go back, do it again with after a short break or something, bam, do it again, and, and then hopefully it, it all. It, those two are fine, and then maybe a day or two after that, I'll uh, do the, the test. Uh, or not so much a test, but a... I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know. 
figure something out, but some kind of a... Something, I don't know. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words right now. Something, we'll make it interesting. Something to, to uh, showcase the complexity of it. And, uh, and we'll throw, we'll, we'll move the fuel um, at the appropriate times to keep the center of gravity so we maintain our Mach 2 speed across the Atlantic. We'll be outside a little bit here and there. You know, we'll uh, we'll be outside breaking the sound barrier as we go over the uh, Atlantic, heading for Heathrow, and then we'll come in on our uh, approach, put it on the ground at Heathrow. And we will have the classic. Uh, they have two different uh, British Airway liveries for the Concorde. We'll have the classic British Airways livery. One that it first uh, flew in service with before they changed the livery up a bit. All right, half an hour on this leg so far. At least that, that river is a good feature that we can we have eyes on that lets us know roughly where we are for the flight so far. Not quite at the halfway point yet, but we're getting there. Let's say another hour. Let's see, this is supposed to be an hour. Almost two hours, so yeah, another hour or another 30 or so minutes, and then we'll be at the halfway point. But I think we'll we'll definitely get there a little bit quicker. Although we've we were going fairly quick at first, now we're kind of settled at 113 knots. So that hour and 53 might be fairly close to, to spot on. We've, we've, we're losing a bit of speed, but part of it is I think we're still climbing a little bit here and there. So we're going to give a little bit more throttle just to see if we can squeeze out a little bit more speed here without climbing. I don't want the plane to climb. We're, we're fine where we are. We're not going over anything. Uh, not like the other day where we had to kind of get over the mountains. So I'd like to, to kind of get the plane leveled off so we can gain a little bit of speed. So we've been in the air about an hour now <clears throat> on the flight. We did start the stream at 10 after 7 Eastern time. I swear I hear like the faint beeping of the of our our um Hello Ventral Squid, how are you? Nice to see you here. You are well. We're on our second leg of our flight to Singapore. We're on our longest leg actually. We're almost halfway we're at 34 minutes on this leg, roughly, almost 35. So we've got a little bit longer to go so that we reach the halfway point. 
there in the distance. We are heading for our second, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a nice uh, sunrise departure from uh, Alar Sitar earlier. I, I, I changed the uh, time for a sunrise flight, and so the sun's coming up, and it's up in the air now, getting there. So yeah, we, we should be good for the entire flight. Shouldn't run out of run out of light or anything. So, yeah, it's been been good. So next this time next week we will be probably not long around about this time next week we'll be on the ground in our final destination Indonesia, and uh, we'll be wrapping up. A journey that started back on April 21st in the Fokker F7B, which uh, proved to be more not quite up to the task of the flight of this journey. So, we pressed the Junkers 52 into service. It was the retrofit first, and then we swapped it to the the, the original most original as possible, I believe. And we've done pretty well with it. And we've been able to tune in. Everything works. Our needle pointing to the uh, our VOR DME in the distance works. Yeah, I what it was, I first I found I think it was on the forum. Somebody suggested uh, there was a, a Junkers flight that went from Berlin to Athens. Yeah. So I did that, and then I was thinking about it, I'm like, well, because that followed the classic, uh, an actual route that that uh, Deutsche Lufthansa, the original Lufthansa airline, did in the 1930s also. So I'm like, well, I wonder if KLM had something like that. Lo and behold, when I did the research, it was like this long route. It took them a week from start to finish. They flew a lot of the legs from, they would just keep going and they would take off in the morning and try to get to a certain point before dark because they couldn't fly in the evening. It was it was legitimately VFR flying. And so they would get to their destination before dark. They would land, stop there for the night. The passengers would get off the plane. They would stay at a nice hotel, eat the local cuisine, maybe do a little bit of sightseeing and all that. So... When I saw the route, and I was like, there's just no way I could do all that. Because some of the legs would have been like six hours, right? And I'm like, I can't, I can't stream that long. It's, that's just too much. So what I did was I broke it up into chunks to make it a little bit more manageable. Some of them were already okay as it was, but the, some of the longer legs, I was like, I got to find a, like a halfway point. So... Some of the stops we stopped at are were not on the original route. They were, I added them in, but some of the stops along the way no longer exist. So I had to find something close to where, where they would have landed. And then also come to find out, like a lot of the airfields we've landed at along the way have all been converted into military air bases. Which, you know, you think that people made it through there in the 1930s and it was fine. But, yeah. So, like, some of the times I could not find, like, information on, on Sky Vector because that airfield does not exist in their, um, in their database. For, for security reasons, obviously. But, um, so, yeah, I, I had to try to find like a VOR DME or anything nearby that I could say, okay, I can get to here. And then from there, I just have to turn, you know, uh, you know. so yeah, it's, I was, I've only been doing the flights on Mondays and Wednesdays. We would have been done a little bit sooner, but you know, there's been some times where I've had to cancel the flight. And so then I would push it to the following day or, you know, the following week, whatever. So, um, so yeah, it turned out to be a 32 leg journey, but it wasn't that, uh, 
much in real life. They would fly several, you know, like at least three or four legs from sun up to sun, almost sun down, and then they would stop for the night. But there was no way I could do that much flying in one day. Yeah, I, I liked it. Um, well, like when I was looking at the history of the Junkers 52 and the, and the Fokker F-7B, like the fact that they, they did fly elsewhere around the world, like the Junkers 52 did fly in South America. The, uh, and, and initially in, under the old Deutsch Luft Hansa, uh, times, um, oh, a lot of the pilots, a lot of the crew were all, uh, Luftwaffe members. Hello, Para. Um, so they you know like they were still flying uh prior to the bombing of 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 England during you know the start of you know they they were flying to uh London in in Deutsche Lufthansa Lufthansa had a service that from like Berlin to 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 London so they were, they were basically spying, you know, they would come in and they would make notes. So, but they, nobody knew that they were, well, I don't, I think some, somebody had to have known that they were, that they were basically spies. Hold on, I got to read buffering again. There we go. Um... So basically what was happening was they would go, they, they went to South America and said, hey, we'll bring planes, we'll bring pilots, we'll fly mail, we'll fly passengers, let's make a deal. And so they did. Um, and so they were flying in South America for quite some time. Once word got out about what was happening in Germany, all the, they kicked all those people out and they seized all the equipment and uh, so yeah they distanced themselves from the whole thing um, but yeah they they had definitely um, once word got around the countries that they were operating in were like no you gotta go we can't have you here so yeah, they were they were kicked out of a lot of those countries. So there is a quite a history worldwide of the Junkers 52 and the Fokker F7B. They flew some of them flew in Spain. You know, like I did find a bunch of different things uh, that eventually I would like to do those some other routes. Um, but it's finding. Um, I kind of like this VOR to VOR fly in that it breaks up. It's not like a straight shot, right? We don't just take off and go on this heading for 280 nautical miles, for instance. You know, we, we break it up into legs, so it's it's a bit easier to keep track of, right? At least for me. So... Um, but they did probably do that. There was no VOR to VOR flying. They would just take off and go on a heading, and you know the navigator would would check and say, "Yep, this is where we are. We got this much farther to go. And we got this much, you know." So they that's what they would do. They didn't do this particularly this way, but I did it this way so that we break up the the chunk of the flight. You know, we put it into legs, and then it's easier to keep track of. And also, some t really a lot of it too is, is that it's scenic. You know, we go over some very nice scenery. Look at all this farmland. So, yeah, it's just. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna take the Junkers across America. Um, we're gonna start in New York at JFK. We're going to go around America. We're going to go through all the states, with the exception of Hawaii. We're going to do continental. We're, we're going to, well, we can do flights around Hawaii. 
we can just spawn in over there. We won't fly all the way to Hawaii and Yucca Shift. We wouldn't make it. Unless I put on, like, the unlimited fuel. But that's not very realistic. Um, not that I fly completely realistic either. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, we could do some flights around up in Alaska and in uh, Hawaii. Um, so what we may do is w once we get to the West Coast and we're heading up the West Coast, we can, like, say we get to San Francisco and from there we... We hop over to Hawaii, fly around Hawaii, and then next time we come back and we go from San Francisco to the next, you know, somewhere else up the coast. And then once we get up to, like, Seattle, we go up to or Alaska, do some flights around Alaska, and then come back down to Seattle. Try to keep, the, I'm going to try to keep the flights to about an hour and a half, two hours tops. Um... We're going to try to land it at regional airports that would certainly have enough runway space to support a Junkers 52. So, and then we'll, we'll mix it up, but we'll try to go to places we haven't been to yet. But some places we may revisit that we've already, you know, kind of seen and, and all that. Um... I'm still trying to figure out what plane I want to use for the flight down the uh, Route 66. I don't want it to be too fast. I want to be able to enjoy the scenery that, and also gives us time to talk about the history of um, uh, of Route 66 and all that. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'm a little bit busy on the server now. So yeah, but yeah, I think uh, um, in the near, wow, looks like that F-18 is going to crash, doesn't it? No, he's just... There we go. Wow, he's really, something's not right because he's jumping all over the place. Look at that. Yeah. He's, he's definitely legging. Very stuttery. Um, so yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Is we're, I'm going to scale back to only four days a week of streaming. Um, I think the seven days a week was is, is a bit much. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> so yeah, we'll do. So for kind of catching up for for Para since he wasn't here earlier. So Para, what I'm going to do is once I conclude the flight on the 17th, that last leg that gets us to our final destination in Indonesia, uh, I will wrap up the stream, and then I'm going to take a break until the 29th. The 29th will have the uh, first official. Um, stream but sometime before that I'm going to do a stream with the Concord you know, see this is this is why I don't like uh, multiplayer sometimes you always get that one person the F-18 that's got to buzz everybody um, anyway so I got to get at least three or at least two start to finish flights from, from JFK to Heathrow in the Concorde. 
with, you know, make it the entire way and, and all that from, from takeoff to landing. Um, so, um, so I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a stream where we're, we're going to have a, um, it's, I'm going to show the whole startup procedure, but it's going to be very, uh, tedious, I guess, in a way, because it's like, I'm going to try to, to uh, yeah, I know, huh? Yeah, I would hate to have my whole flight ruined because somebody thinks that it's, uh, yeah. But anyway, looks like they, I don't see them anymore. They, find, they, they may have left. Anyway, um, so, uh, what was I trying to say here? Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a very long process. I'm going to go through all the, the whole startup thing, taxi out to go to take off runway, and do the whole thing from start to finish. So, but it's going to be, a, I'm going to have to be very slow because if I, if I start going through stuff and then it's like, um, people's, oh, no, no, wait, what, what? So it's like I'm trying to be cognizant of the fact that people are going to have a ton of questions, possibly. I'd rather be, pre expect that and be prepared than say, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm just going to ignore the chat and do, do what I got to do to get the plane started up. You know, I'm trying to find a, a balance here. Uh, and then we're going to do the flight, we'll land, we'll taxi, we'll, we'll park it, shut it down. And so it's going to be probably, I mean, the flight, they said traditionally the flight from JFK to Heathrow was about three and a half hours. I think if we have live weather and we get a good tailwind, we could probably get there a little bit quicker. I mean, we'll already go, be going Mach 2, but if we have a tailwind, I think we'll, we'll get a nice little push, possibly. We'll see. But we'll be up at 60,000 feet, so we may have hardly any wind at all. But just the, the fact that we're going Mach 2, we'll, we'll get there. I do not expect that everybody's going to have the Concorde. The, the server will be open, but just be aware, unless you have, you know, even a fire jet, you can't keep... Oh, what in the world? It just went dark. What happened? Well, that was not expected. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. I just reset the time. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Um. So, yeah, if you're going to fly along, just be cognizant that we're going to get up to 60,000 feet. We're going to go Mach 2 for for a good portion of the flight so I don't expect that you're going to be able to keep up with me uh, possibly but I don't know you know um, and I didn't and I don't don't please don't go out and spend the money just to fly with me you know it's not a cheap aircraft yeah that, that was very strange era. so I don't expect you to, to buy the plane just to fly with me okay I, I really don't want that I, you know, so if you don't have it already, don't, you don't have to spend your money to fly with me. Right? So anyway, um, so we've been, so according, so we are close to, Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. So, yeah, I... So we are definitely over... If we're there... Hold on a second, let me look at my chart here. We're talking to Kalua Lumpur approach. That means we are near WMSA. 
which means we are we're almost there to our our nap point we're getting there if if that's who we're who we're talking to then i believe let's have a look here it should be off to our that airport should be over here somewhere we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it if that's the case then i know where we are um so anyway um so yeah the uh Yeah, so that that stream will be very long. I'll try to to be slow in the cockpit and, or the flight deck to show everything, but I don't want to spend forever on the ground starting the plane up either, you know, because the the flight's going to be um, a bit stressful enough as it is. So I would like to get things going and then push back so we can get up in the air and, and get on our way. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, and then we'll have the checklist throughout the, and like I said, we're not going to automate everything. We're going to go through the procedures of moving the fuel around in the plane to keep the center of gravity where it should be for the flight and all that and then uh, and then we'll, and then we'll do another flight where it'll be we'll start up kind of like on the runway and then get the aircraft still set up get all the fuel on board take off and then we'll let some of the stuff be automated and it'll be a little bit less hectic so but I'm, I'm trying to hopefully when I do the flight I have enough mods here that can kind of keep the chat under control that can you know if people want to come in and ask questions if I don't see it right away that they if they start spamming you know the um, the question or, or whatever will uh, they'll be dealt with accordingly But I'm trying. I'll, I'll have to see. The other thing I'll I'll try to find as well is I'm gonna like a if there's a website possibly that that talks a little bit more about. I'm sure there's got to be one somewhere. Some of the systems of the Concord that I certainly wouldn't be able to explain in great detail. But you know, you can get, I'll provide a link and you can read all that stuff on your own. I. So, if, oh, I gotta see if we see our airport here or something. So we, we must be getting close to them if we're talking to them on approach. Alright, there's that. Let me see if, uh. No, 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 no. Uh, no, 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 no. No, that's not what I meant. Era. I'm just saying that if um, for um, for that particular flight, I know people are, I, well, I can't say that I know. I'm guessing that people will have a lot of questions and I'm trying to be prepared mentally for that so that I don't, you know, I don't get frustrated and, and start yelling at people in the chat. It's just that I have to find... <clears throat> um, I want the interaction. I know people are possibly going to have questions, but I don't want that to be that for that to take over the entire stream necessarily. That it's like I'm stuck at one point because I'm answering questions, and you know, like I got to move things forward as well. Oh, well, happy birthday, Para! Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's just finding that balance. That's going to be the tough spot. 
I think, I feel. Uh, so, anyway, um, so we gotta be, well, I think we already passed that airport. It's somewhere back here, I think. It, That. So we're flying over these low mountains, kind of. So I know, I know roughly where we are, I do believe. So we're almost to our second nav point. Yeah, we're going to cross over these low, low mountains here. So yeah, we're we're doing much better. So we, we have hour and thirty nine now, oh, oh, and just over an hour now, almost at an hour and a minute. So that time, an hour fifty three, seemed to be pretty far off as well. But um, it's fine. You know, it's better to be uh, safe than sorry. I'd rather have a, a decent estimate because if we got lost, um, we'd have a rough estimate as to when we would cross that VOR DME. So we got a TACAN coming up on it's 103 nautical miles. But it's certainly not going to be a five and a half hour flight. <laughs> that is for sure. I don't know where that estimation comes from, but so far those have been completely well off, it seems. So. Oh, I need to finish my coffee, I think. But still, once we make the change on the street on the channel, you know we're only going to be flying four days a week. The multiplayer server will still be open. I'll still post the information. If you want to fly, you're more than welcome to. If not, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, I'm going to fly regardless. So, and also, I'm, I'm just going to say this. Especially on Fridays, since we it won't be necessarily a theme sort of thing. If there's a particular plane that I have, that you have, that you want to fly, for me to fly with you so that you can kind of learn all the particulars about it, I'm more than happy to do that. But if not, then we're just going to pick whatever and that'll be that. But it won't be long five or six hour jetliner flights. I, I can't do that. So please don't expect that that's the sort of thing that I can do. It's a, that's just too much time for me. Reminds me from Spaceballs, Mr. Coffee and Mr. Radar. Which part? Para. I'm not sure what you mean. There's this area, and this part, I've seen Spaceball in ages, so this must be, let's zoom in a little bit here, hmm. Alright, the airport over there, where that A20N is, that must be, let's have a look here, that must be the actual Kuala Lumpur uh, airport, I'm guessing. Nope, that, wait a minute. 
All right, I am well off my estimation. That must be the first Kuala Lumpur airport. I only see a single runway. Okay, yep, now I know where we are. I, I, I misjudged my... Uh, where I was, so, based on the terrain, so, all right, so now I know where we are, we do still have a bit to go here, so, but we're more than halfway on this leg, um, but I still don't think it'll take an hour and 53 minutes to get there, at least I don't, I don't think so. Oh, talking about coffee. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I I usually get up or well when I get up in the morning that's the one thing I do is, is get myself a cup of coffee going. And then uh I I I let it cool down for a little bit and then I start drinking it. Sometimes I'll finish the whole cup before I fly. Other times it's like I, I drink a little bit of it at a time and then next thing I know it's like gone super cold and it's like, ugh. It's not very tasty. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I said, I haven't seen that movie in quite some time. Oh my goodness. Oh, my throat is just giving me all kinds of grief this morning. So anyway, the um, mm. so yeah, we still got a bit to go. Yeah, we're definitely over. Uh, Kuala Lumpur we might so yeah there's the first airport there's another airport probably where those two aircraft are at right there oh I don't know if we're gonna fly we might I think it's over by is it closer to this this one I know the the racetrack Uh, uh, sea pain, uh, the Malay where the Malaysian Grand Prix took place. I don't know that they race there anymore, do they? So it was an interesting track. Yeah, I don't think they go to Malaysia anymore, which is unfortunate. So yeah, there's the main city there. But I think the the I, I want to say that the track is near the larger airport there, where those two planes are sitting at. Eight minutes, almost an hour nine on this on this leg. Yeah, hour nine now. So I think we're gonna make it well before the hour fifty-three. I hope. We'll see. Now that we are past, uh, yeah, it definitely did. <clears throat> so yeah, there's the main. That's the larger airport there for Kuala Lumpur. So yeah, I think the racetrack was right near the airport, so that the when the teams flew in, they didn't have very far to travel to get set up for the race weekend. Um, 
yeah that's got to be the the main airport there so we're we're getting closer uh i i definitely think we're gonna definitely get there before an hour 53 i i i hope <laughs> and then we'll we'll get uh get things wrapped up call it a day you know all that good stuff yeah 99 was the first race yeah i remember i i didn't the design of the track was kind of like eh. i mean it, it wasn't interesting but the that weird you go down the straight and then you got that very tight left hander onto the main straight yeah it was just i don't know Yeah, it's kind of a, a bit of a weird layout, but um, anyway, yeah, it's just sad that they spent all that money, and it's it's a beautiful track, but now it's not being used. Get a uh, bit of a ad break here for some folks. Ooh, wow, I'm getting way off track here. Posting the uh, pictures from this morning for the takeoff and on part of the first leg of our flight. Those are up now on the Discord channel. And for those for those of you who are on the Discord, any of those pictures, if you like them, download them. Use them for a background on your computer. More than welcome to do that. Just please don't tell everybody that you're the one that took the photo. It's not nice. Oh, speaking of photos. Oh, I forgot about this. And I haven't got an email back from them yet. But I got a message from a person who works at a museum that has a have a picture of an old NASCAR car that I took at Laguna Seca. They were running the historic NASCAR. I think it was on a on a Rolex sports car series weekend that I went to there. Anyway, they asked if they could use the picture for part of the collection around the car um yeah okay i i thought moto gp still went there that's right um so yeah they they said yeah we'll credit you and everything and you know they just because I, I don't check my messages often on on Flickr. uh they had messaged a few weeks back and so i was like well oh, sorry i didn't know that you had messaged me but I let them know that they could, so I don't know if they didn't respond back to me and say anything. All right, so that's the second one. So we're we're talking to approach over there. I've had a few people who've, you know, messaged me and said, hey, you know, I think one of my photos is at a uh, railway museum in Plano, Texas, I think it was. It's always nice when, I, I appreciate when people ask for my permission. That's always a good thing. But yeah. I haven't heard back from them. I think some of my pictures still are still at the community college I used to go to. Well, somebody took them down and tossed them, which is possible.
haven't been over there in a couple of years now, it seems like. Yeah. Two years. It'll be two years this... Two years this month. Yeah. Oh. Ant. Ant. That just reminded me. At this time, at some point in the very distant past, I'm not going to say how long ago, or on this date, I reported to basic training. I won't tell you what year exactly. It was... It was in the past. <laughs> it's hard to believe it's been been that long. It's kind of a strange looking cloud. What is it? It almost looks like a butt, doesn't it? Did anybody else see this? Does that look like a butt? Right there? <laughs> Mom, the clouds in the sim are making fun of me again. <laughs> what in the world? Now it doesn't look like one. Now it's changed. But from a certain angle, it did. It looked like a butt. See? I'm looking at it. Mm-hmm. Sobo, you and your strange clouds. In the immortal wor word of Addies, what do you like? <laughs> All right, so... We are parallel with that airport, roughly. So we are, we're getting there, folks. We have one more airport to cross, and then we will turn towards our Tacan. Keep making our way. So we're we're getting there. Over 17 on this leg. I think we're definitely going to make it before hour third and hour fifty-three. So, unless something crazy happens. So yeah, I can't believe it's been that long since I've been in basic training. Goodness gracious, where's the time gone? Hmm. Oh no, it did, didn't it, Para? That's what I was like, wait a minute. That's a very strange cloud formation. And then as I got closer, I'm like, wait a minute, it looks like somebody's butt, you know, or not somebody's, but just looks like a butt in the in the clouds. And then all of a sudden, as you as I got closer, that it just like psh, suddenly changed. And I'm like, wait a second. I want to meet myself, folks, because the. Uh... That seems to be a more common occurrence every morning lately. Anyone's going somewhere, going to the hospital, or going to get somebody to bring to the hospital. And I don't think it's car accidents. I think people are <clears throat> passing out at home from the from the heat. So they're dehydrated.
a lot of elderly folks here who are don't have anybody looking in on them, unfortunately. A lot of them apparently used to work either for IBM when it was here or they worked for the shoe factory when the shoe factory was open, which the building up the street going towards Walmart, um, it was a part of the shoe factory and it's being gutted and turned into nice apartments. Go figure. <laughs> like I don't think anybody can afford those right now, not unless you are maybe a doctor or a lawyer The, and the, the other thing too is, is it's right next to the railroad track. So I'm guessing the, the, um, you know, the windows are going to be double paned for, for, you know, try to mute the sound of the train going by at any given point throughout the day or night. But yeah, they're, they've been working on that for last couple of months now. The, uh, well, actually before that. I think once we got out of the winter, they started, they had already were working inside, pulling down a lot of the old stuff, and now they, they've gone around, they've repainted the outside, they've, you know, changed, they've already put the, like, the apartments together, kind of, you know, the walls and everything, the framing, and uh, pretty soon the, the glass will go in, I'm sure. And then they'll they'll make a parking spot for the tenants somewhere. I'm sure, or maybe they'll make something into a garage of some kind. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they're going to be nice apartments, but. I don't know how anybody's going to afford to live there. Alright. That is behind us. Our airport that we're going to cross over is kind of on the coast. Let me take a look at the chart again so I'm making sure I'm talking about the right thing. So it's a little bit inland. It's not right along the coast, but... Um, I know the I see the layout, so I know kind of what to expect once we we spot the uh, the airport and the and the runway. There's only one runway. It basically, will run. I think it runs almost east west. So, well, let me take a look here. Let's see if I can. Which one is that? W. M K M W M K M it might be a, a military airfield. Let's see. Nope, there it is. Oh, that's Malacca. So that should be the last airport we're going to cross over in Malaysia before we head over into the Republic of Singapore. Um, okay, so the VOR is also near runway three. So it's almost a north-south, not east-west. Yeah. Ooh, drifting again. So it's going to be not on this side, or it won't be inland, it'll be closer to the coast over here. Oh, there goes the time again. What in the world? That's the second time that's happened. Reset. Goodness gracious. I don't know what's going on there. Hmm. 
Servers must be having issues or something. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, so it'll be... There's the coastline there. Over there. So yeah, we'll cross over this. This will be the last airport that we'll cross in Malaysia airspace. And then we'll head over into the Republic of Singapore. Never been a part of China. Although a lot of Chinese people do live there. It has never been a part of China. I mistakenly thought that for many years that it had been part of China. It used to be a part of Malaysia, actually, in the 60s. And then the, <clears throat> the Malaysian government basically told Singapore that they, the actual Mal if people were the people who were born in Malaysia had preference, they they were supposed to get preference for any job opening, and so it caused a huge rift. And then Malaysia basically kicked Singapore out of the out of the agreement they had. And Singapore was in dire straits basically financially, and so they. They made some massive changes and and uh, got people working and yeah, turned everything around. They did have required national service uh, every male, I think, over the age of 18 had to serve at least two and a half years in the uh, military for the Republic of Singapore. They dialed that down. They said, well, they cut the, the half a year off and now it's only two years of required service. Singapore and some of the history. It's very interesting history. Oh, there's Siren again. hour 28 almost an hour 29 so yeah we're definitely i think we're going to get there well before our hour 53 mark i could be wrong but i, I kind of feel like we're going to get there with well before that time Just want to make sure we cross over that VOR DME before we turn on a heading of 120. Make our way to Singapore airspace.
No right. We should be crossing it here any moment now. Let's try and keep an eye out for that airport. So basically what... Uh, oh, no, I was just kind of just sitting here thinking. That's... Nope, just wasn't talking, that's all. <laughs> um, so basically, once we head towards our TACAN, right? Which, it's just another type of navigation aid for us on this flight. From that TACAN, it's going to be a very quick run to our last nav point and then turning into the for our landing. We've got an ILS approach. We've got the, the frequency already uh, written down. So we'll, when, when we're getting ready to land, we'll, I'll dial that in. We'll line up and we'll put the plane on the ground. Um, so yeah, but we have to be at like 1,500 feet. In pro Excuse me, I had to meet myself there. Um, we're reading uh, 1,500 feet uh, in preparation for landing. So we will dump some altitude, we'll dump some speed, and then we'll go ahead and line up and uh, get it on the ground. All right, hey. I don't think that's that almost feels looks like an airport, but I don't think that's it. I think we uh, still go just a bit farther. Nope, I was just kind of thinking ahead of after we we head towards our third navigation point. That's that's all. Hmm. Hour 34, so yeah, we're definitely going to be there before hour 50. Which is cool. We've been streaming two and a half hours. We've been in the air about two hours now. Nope, that is the airport right there. Okay. I see the runway. And our VOR DME is like right, hopefully right over there somewhere. So we will go ahead and pass over that. 
and then we'll dial in our next navigation aid. Head on our next heading. Definitely getting there way before the time, expected time, but that's okay. That's good. We're doing good, very good on time. Now this next leg was supposed to, is supposed to take about 53 minutes, but I think we're going to get there much quicker. passed over it. So yeah, it's like right, I think it's right there off of that. Usually most of those things are like on a, there's like a patch of land that it's cleared out, like all the grass or anything is cleared away from it, and then it, um, there's usually like a road of some kind, like a dirt road that will, um, take, you know, for like the maintenance folks or whatever to get to it. Uh, it's usually, it's definitely usually behind a locked gate of some kind. All right, so let's go ahead and tune in. Uh, it? Um, one one five one zero. And the heading of. Let's say one two zero. Here we are. So we got this little gnat that's just bugging me. No pun intended. Oh, uh, yeah, hour 38 is what was our... So we did that very well. Got there very quickly. Started the stopwatch for the third leg. again. So good morning. All right. There we are. It's good that our needle has already picked up the signal, taking us, pointing us in the right direction there. So, we are in the last quarter of the flight roughly now. Almost the last quarter, give or take. This is, we, uh, Hello, Joseph. Um, let's see. I forgot what I was going to say. Um, so 
Yeah, this this leg's a hundred and two nautical miles, but I think we're gonna. It says fifty three. I calculated fifty three minutes, but we've been doing good on time today, so I think we'll get there. I'm gonna guess about thirty five minutes, roughly. So I'm using the F thirty five. I'm fine, Joseph. How are you? I'm guessing you went to the go kart track today to work. Too hot. Too hot for what? To go work or I don't know. What do you mean? Or it was too hot to stay home. So I'm guessing we will talk to Singapore Center at some point. Oh. Huh. So you basically stayed home today is what you're saying. You continue to t tango November Gulf. How about that? I'm going to continue. You can continue. To, oh, you went there. Okay. I'm, I'm confused then, Joseph. So you went there and you tried to work, but it was too hot to work? Is that what you mean? So you just went back home? I'm, I'm perplexed by your story, Joseph. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, where I used to work at in the Mountain View area in California, south of San Francisco, they had an indoor go kart track. That if you if you had a long enough lunch, right, you could, in theory, go over there, get about ten laps in, and still have time to eat something. Um, but you have you know, uh, okay. So you, so you did something. All right. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I was like, I thought you meant when you said it was too hot that you didn't go to the go kart track. Anyway, uh, 
So yeah, it was a pretty neat place. I don't, I, I don't, it was like in an old uh, warehouse that somebody leased it to, to do the go-kart thing. And, you know, you have to go in and they have like a little safety briefing. I'm working in 32 degrees. In theory. Oh, yeah, I tested it a couple times. Yeah. Uh, me and a, somebody else I used to work with, we would go over there during lunch. Get, our, get the laps in and then grab a McDonald's on the way back to work. But they provide you with a helmet and like a padded neck thing. Um, I don't know what, if that would really do anything, but they I think they were required to provide some sort of a neck protection. All right, eight, almost eight and a half minutes on this leg. So this, um, go across, follow this here. Okay. All right. So we're basically going to stay kind of right near the coast here until we intercept that uh, airport. That should be our... No, it's not an airport. It's just a... No, it is an airport. Tenga is the name. There's, there is a small airport, I think, near there. Um, oh, yeah, it's a military uh, airbase. There it is. Okay. It's just, that's why it's not showing up on uh on there okay yeah wsat yeah there's a that's a military air base we just had four hours if you're lucky yeah oh yeah i i don't miss uh traffic that's for sure um perfectly fine walking to Walmart. I can take the bus if I buy anything that's going to be a bit heavy to carry. But, uh, yeah. Otherwise, I just, I can walk there and back, and it's not that difficult to do. I try to go at a time where it's a little bit cooler out, either in the morning or in the evening. So it does not look like the um, other uh, that uh, TV dinner table that I ordered will be here today. So I have to, I'm going to go ahead and call Amazon customer service and tell them I am not going to wait all day or till tomorrow. Because there's been no update at all. Now, of course, they're going to say, well, we have to wait until at least a certain point of the day just to make sure that it's they just haven't updated their system, that's all. But uh, it is, uh, for all intents and purposes, in my mind, it's lost. I think they put it on the wrong truck, and it's somewhere else in America right now, and it's nobody's discovered it. So, uh, it is a, they're going to have to issue a refund. And I don't, I prefer that they just do it today 
start the thing today instead of tomorrow. I just don't see that it's going to get here. But they'll probably tell me I have to wait until at least 6 o'clock East Coast time before they will do anything. But there's been no update in the UPS system since Monday. And they, they were telling me that it's running late. But on the Amazon website says if it's not here by today, you need to go back to the Amazon website tomorrow. What a waste. Well, at least I get my money back. But that's... Uh, Oh well. Just run this setup the way it is now for the time being. Well, thirteen and a half minutes on this on this leg so far. A little bit bumpy. I don't have the live weather on. I'm getting a little little push. Somewhere. <sighs> um let's see. Alright, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna take another quick break. Stretch my legs a bit. And then uh, I'll be back in a moment. We will be ready to wrap things up for today's flight. So I will be back in just a bit, folks. Oh, sorry. I'm back. Um, we, didn't, we didn't drift off too much. We're still roughly heading in the correct direction. So let me have a look at the chart. Let's see where we are in relation to our... Next nav point. Okay. Uh, all right, I see that curvature. That must be it there. There's a waterway. Looks like a river area. Yep, okay. Crossed over that. So we are about halfway to our, our next uh, navigation point. We're almost there, folks. I do think we should start dropping some altitude here at this point in the flight. 
So I'm going to go ahead and coax the aircraft into dropping its altitude a bit. We want to manage our descent at a reasonable rate so we don't go to zipping down to, to the ground. Okay, there. So, uh, let's see what was that in the airport there. V. Is W S A T. So that is oh okay. So I I don't have a I think the TACAN. If I remember where, I think it's towards um this side of the runway. When I, if I remember looking when we looked at the the flight plan this morning, it was towards uh, this side. So, um, so, yeah, we're just gonna make sure we pass over that. Almost 19 minutes on this leg. We're about halfway there, so I think we'll get there well before the 53-minute mark. Try to get the plane to... Oh, see, now it wants to climb. I, I add speed, and then it's like, oh, we're trimmed out. Let's go ahead and climb, then. Ugh, I don't want you to climb. I want you to reduce... I don't want it to be... I want to pick up a little bit of speed to cover that distance. I don't want to. I don't want to speed per se. I want to go into like over speed. So, yeah, I'm thinking we're going to talk to Singapore Center here at any moment now. Because that, that, where we're crossing over is in the Republic of Singapore. So we should be crossing over that international boundary at some point. Let's see how uh, how we do with that. Oh, you guys! Some of you folks got ads. Sorry, I just saw the thing. All right, so we're almost there. We're but we're gonna yeah we're dropping the altitude. Because it's a quick run of only 13 nautical miles to our last uh, nav point, and then we're going to turn in on our runway on a heading of 203, and we'll be on the ground. We'll manage it, the chaos as best as we can. chart again. That is not very clearly defined on the chart, I don't think. Nope, that is not that. It's like another river area. That is much more pronounced. Hmm.
try to pick a um, another. There's another river inland. Let's see if I can spot that somewhere. It does not look like anything. Can't be that far inland. Hmm. No, no, I don't think we are. Alright, I'm just gonna keep flying along here. See if I can't pick out something else that might give me a clue as to how much farther we got to go. Looking for okay, this little low mountain. Should see that before we see our airport. Cooling approach. Cooling approach. Oh, okay. I know exactly. I see cooling. Now I kind of have an idea where we are. All right. So we still got a bit of way to go. Uh, thoughts on flight sim adding in the fictional aircraft. Like the Pelican from... Oh! Uh, well, um... I know on the PC side there's a, quite a few people who have, like, put in the pod racers from the... the from the prequels from Star Wars, you know, young Anakin was, a, you know, did the little pod racing and all that. Um, I know some people have modded in X-Wings as well. I think maybe even a TIE Fighter, possibly. But I know, I've heard, I've heard of people doing the X-Wing thing. Um, I mean, it, I think it's a fun thing. Like, I, you know, like... You could, in theory, do a flight in it, right? It has a navigation system. You could probably put in a whole, create a whole IFR flight and, and all that. Now, as far as altitude goes, I, I don't know, you know. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's interesting, but I, I, I had some fun with it. Like, I took off in it. I didn't do a stream with it, but I, I was like, yeah, it's a, it's a something fun. I, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would fly it in a, in either of my own. Well, I, I've thought about doing just a quick little fun sort of flight in it. Uh, I don't know that I would join anybody else's stream unless it was a, or flight, unless it was like a whole flight of pelicans, right? I think that would be pretty cool, but. Yeah, I think for just for a fun thing. I mean, it's 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 it kind of it makes me feel like there's you know like when we had the game of the year edition, right? We got this, you know, we got some free stuff, and everybody was excited, you know. And for the most part, all that free stuff was pretty amazing, right? But when, uh, but some people like it's not that you have to download it, right? Um, yeah, like, uh, I, 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 I've seen pictures, like, if you go on the micro, the flight sim forums, uh, the official forum, there's a section called, what did you do in, in MS, FS today, kind of thing, and people will post pictures, and they're like, oh, I took the, you know, like, they, there are those mods out there, I don't know where they got them, or if they just created them themselves, and they, you know, it's not something... I'm sure there's stuff out there that's for free on the PC side. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's... I think it's a fun thing to do. Um, I know a lot of people are like, Oh, how dare they, you know, what's next? You know, the USS Enterprise, and you know, um, kind of thing. I mean, it's not like you're required to have it. You know, if you don't want it, you don't have to download it to your system. You know. 
the, it doesn't af affect your flying at all, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So if some people enjoy it, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm quite happy to, you know, that they, they get that, you know, that they enjoy it. Whether it's an X-Wing, like I first saw it, and I was like, what, really? But somebody put the time in. Yeah. Um, so what? There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't. It doesn't change your flying. It doesn't change the sim for you in any way, shape, or form. You know. It's, so, I mean, I I think I've tinkered around with the Pelican. I think it's interesting, but I don't know. So. But, you know, just like there, there's going to be things that we're going to get in November for free, right? The the anniversary edition or whatever. And some things are going to be terrific and other things people are going to like, eh, I'm just not going to add it or, you know, I, I'm not going to fly it. You know, so there's I'm I'm really looking forward to the DC-3, not going to lie. I cannot wait for the DC-3. Finally, a, you know classic uh, plane that something that we've been waiting for for some time like that so yeah really looking forward to that I swear I just heard hold on, let me, hold on a second folks let's let's take a little walk here and I'm gonna mute myself real quick I thought for a moment I had heard the uh, a UPS truck pull up up front of my apartment complex. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it might be here today. <laughs> but no, no such luck. All right. Um, so yeah, I. Uh, but again, there's going to be things that people are going to be like, yeah, finally this, and then there's going to be other aircraft in that in that updated, you know, like the anniversary edition that's going to come out in November. That people are going to be like, eh, not that excited, you know. But there, yeah, it's just an interesting thing, I think. And I mean, the cool thing is, it didn't cost anybody anything. And like I said, you don't have to, if you don't want it in your hangar, you don't have to have it there. It doesn't change anything for the sim for you. You know, nor does it change anything if people do enjoy it that's hey good for them nothing wrong with that okay all right let me see where okay that okay I see this the way this land goes. Yeah, okay. We're almost there, folks. 31 minutes. Okay, yep. We're getting there. So, yeah. Um, I was, I mean, I was surprised when, when they put that out. It was one of those things that you didn't, nobody expected, right? So it was kind of a, there we go, Singapore approach. There we are. Finally, we're in Singapore air. Da -da -da. That road must be the boundary or something. All right. We definitely got to start dropping more altitude here. Yeah, I, I was shocked. Like when when it came out, I was it wasn't something I was expecting. But 
Okay, now I know where, now I don't where we are for sure. The Jehoah approach will be to our left, somewhere over. Yeah, it's off to our left here somewhere. Um, but I mean, Sobo and Microsoft are kind of good like that, right? That they, every once in a while, and I think it, it's funny because when I think people are, there's that sense of frustration in the sim community sometimes. They'll, they'll throw out those little kind of unexpected gifts <laughs> in a way. And some people are kind of like, oh, you know what, that's pretty cool. And then they kind of calm back down. And other people are like, oh, how dare they? <laughs> you know, it's like, um, so yeah, it was it was an unexpected surprise. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, but I am looking, for, like the November stuff, I'm really looking forward to that. I cannot wait for, there's going to be more stuff, more, you know, there's different kinds of planes to get, get into. Um, and, and certainly if everything goes well with this Wasm fix here in a couple of weeks, uh, the, the idea that we will have, uh, you know, the, on the, on the Xbox side, we'll hopefully have way more aircraft available to us finally. But how long it will take for that stuff to, to arrive in the marketplace, that's a, we don't know because... Some of the folks who are looking to get their aircraft on onto the Xbox side, they're probably been working on testing everything, and, and of course they'll they may have to tighten a few things up after Sim Update 10 is released. So they may have to go back into a a, a phase where they have to rewrite some code or something maybe, and then submit it for testing, because uh, that's usually about it. I think. I read somewhere, and I might be wrong. It's about a, a two-week process, I think. It might be longer. It might be less. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah. So we'll see what happens. You know, in, in a week from tomorrow, we'll have the... Um, developer Q&A session with Jorg and folks from Sobo and I still think that sim update 10 is going to be the main topic of conversation and questions I think that's where the main, a lot of the questions are going to be geared towards I, I could be wrong but that's I think that's what's on a lot of people's minds And, and especially the Wasm fix for the Xbox. Is that still on track or is it going to be delayed? start to climb again. I don't want you to climb plane. I want you to drop altitude. Quit climbing. <laughs> what are you doing? All right. Well, we're almost there, folks. We're almost there. The last bit of the flight should go very quickly. 36 minutes on this leg. Uh, so we're looking for an airfield. Um, don't know how. I think yeah. See, there's no like indication of how the um, 
how the, the runways run. So we're going to have to keep an eye out. 37 and a half minutes. Once we're clear of these clouds, I'm going to see if I can't spot another feature that will give us an indication of where we are in relation to our nav point ahead of us. Okay, there's that body, little lakes in this. All right, so there's a city there. I want to focus on the chart. Okay, so our airport should be, or that that runway should be, right over. Saying it's almost a little bit to the right. Mm. All right. So we have to cross over. There should be. I know. I'll know exactly where we are. Okay. I see this massive river right here. So once we cross over that, then we're very close to our our, our um, um, okay this is a vintage plane are you using only vintage tech to navigate is that even possible all right so yeah so we have a navigation radio we're tuned into a TACAN which is uh, just a navigation aid here um, in front of us we're we're heading that direction and we're going to turn on another heading to get ready for landing at another airport it is possible to do on the pc side there's actually a possible way to do celestial navigation um in in on the pc side you have to have some different windows open and and all that and it uh but yeah you can do celestial navigation on Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's a very, you know, a bit of a, you know, learning process behind it, but you can even do that. So what I usually do is on the this flight here in the Junkers, uh, I've been using, doing VOR to VOR navigating. We do have a system that works with the radio compass there. We can dial in, it's only, you can only select a f one frequency at a time, so you have to dial in like the next frequency. And thank you for the follow, by the way. Um, you know, because it's it you do have to pay attention to your heading, and this does help you stay on course, right? As long as you follow that needle right there, not so much the compass up here, that one, but the one down here. As long as you keep that pointing the right direction, you'll go right to your navigation aid. Um, so it is a lot different than, you know, you hop in an A320, for instance, you set up everything, you take off, you hit the autopilot, and then the plane basically kind of handles itself. All you have to do is tell it what altitude to go and when to go there. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, so it is possible. It's just, uh, you know, all it takes is time to learn it. It's not as complicated as it seems you know like when i first started learning about vor to vor navigating i'm like it just seems like i, I don't understand it but the more that you work through it and keep trying it the more you'll get comfortable with it so yeah it's it's very uh so they had radios, you know, they basically, so this is uh, an old KLM route.
from the 1930s that we're doing, right? So they did have radios, but you had a navigator on board. They had the chart. And I think predominantly the pilots that flew this route in the 1930s, it was a, a thing that they knew, um, that they knew the route. And so they knew all the, the landmarks that they would use to say, yep, we know exactly where we are in the flight. Um, I think they did a more, they'd take off and they'd head on a, a direction and, and they would only deviate if there was like bad weather or something that they had to, to change their, um, you know, their flight plan. But basically, but they would have, you know, they would know like, okay, it's going to take us this long to get from point A to point B. And so you have the, the, the navigator would time everything and uh, they would have an idea of how long they were on that leg. Um, but I added it only because then it kind of breaks up uh, the leg of the flight. So, because um, if I just do like a one heading for instance it gets it's a little bit boring um but the radio navigating did come it pan am developed it in the 1930s also all right let me see if i can't find this i missed the airfield already no it's it's over the river so we're almost there Okay, interesting. All right, uh, let me hold on a second. One one five one zero. Did I dial? I think I dialed in the wrong. Yep, I sure did. <laughs> All right, on the heading of zero eight two. Okay, I skipped the. I had the wrong frequency. Oh, and then the time changed again. That's the third time that's happened. I think. I, I tried to keep it on a like a morning flight and it keeps going back to midnight for some reason. Okay. There we go. Alright. Um Hello Captain Nine Thousand. Fly past the river turn yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, I had the wrong frequency dialed in. I just realized. So um, so we're getting ready to land. I'm going to go ahead and drop some drop the speed, and we've got to definitely get on that 082 heading. So yeah, that's that's why. Okay, now things make a little bit more sense. I was on the doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Or I had the wrong frequency dialed in. Oops, a daisy. All right, so we definitely made that before 53 minutes. Oops. Go ahead and, uh, no, I don't think so. What's my heading? I'm on a heading of 082 to pick up uh, our final VOR DME to get ready to land here at um, the original Singapore International Airport. It's now a um, military airfield. And I think basically where these aircraft are parked at right here that's where our um, that's where our airport is no it's just it's been a, a weird bug today I, I we took off this I did a like a morning early morning flight the sun was still coming up and then it's just changed times on its own I don't know why it's doing that but I don't, I don't get it but oh well what can you do all right let's tune in our ILS frequency of 10. One five one eleven. 
알지? So now I'm going to go ahead and call them and let them know we're coming in for landing. Should have... There it is right there. Paya Labar. Sort of. Oh, there's the. There it is, right there. All right. So let's. Uh, I'm going to get ready for landing. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a. Of a quick. <laughs> chain of events here. Definitely got to dump some altitude, a lot of altitude. We are way too high. All right. All right. Go ahead and start turning a little bit. Continue to dump altitude. So our needle, which is picking up the ILS frequency down at the other end of the runway, is starting to align. So yeah, sorry if I, I'm going to kind of look away from the chat while I get ready to land because in the past what's been happening is I get a lot of people will ask oh we need to turn on two zero three okay oops other way other way yeah people ask a ton of questions and then I start forgetting things and then you know it's like a very hectic landing oops So, pardon me if I, I don't mean to be rude, I just, I, I have to concentrate on the landing part. I do see an F-15 out there. I think he's... They're parked off the runway. All right, let's see here. We don't want to stall either. The plane wants to just nose up again. Is that Strike Eagle taking off, or is he sitting on the sitting on the end of the runway? It looks like. No, no, he's not. He's off the. He's parked somewhere. Okay.
right, there we are. Eagle, if you're gonna get out of there, if you're gonna taxi, you might as well taxi now and probably have a good chance of getting to the runway and taking off before I come in. <laughs> so we'll be back tomorrow, folks. 710 Eastern, 1110 UTC, 1210 UK in the Cessna 208B. All right, quick ad break, folks. final Plenty of runway to use. Keep slowing down a little bit more. Lead off some airspeed. There we are. On behalf of myself and the entire flight crew, we'd like to welcome you to Singapore. Local time is sometime in the evening. It is not morning time. We understand and appreciate the fact most people enjoy watching landings more than anything else on this stream channel. We're glad that you chose to watch the landing with us today. <laughs> Do join us tomorrow. Cessna 208B, Gainesville to Augusta. Gainesville, Florida to Augusta, Georgia. In the Pan Am liveried Cessna 208. Tail wheels almost down. Brakes just a smidge. Yeah, I'm trying to slow down there a bit, buddy. All right, there we go. We're just going to go all the way down to the end there.
So the stream will start about 7.10. I will post the flight information for tomorrow's flight in the Discord. There's a link to the Discord in the description. If not, I can provide one here in a moment once we are off the runway. Next week we will depart from here on leg 30 of 32. Tuesday will be leg 31. Wednesday will be leg 32 and we will conclude this journey from Amsterdam to Indonesia, the former Dutch East Indies. right there. Ta-da! Not a very far taxi, is it? Uh, yeah, once I park the aircraft, I'll uh, get the uh, link to the Discord if anybody wants to join the Discord. It's not a chatty Discord. It's just basically information that I put up, out about the flights. And there are some other links that I provide. There's one for uh, anything aviation-related. There's a whole area for that. And there's also an area dedicated to motorsport stuff. That's also one of your things. If we had to go around, we would have had enough fuel for it, but luckily we did not have to do that. Oops. All right, there we are. Uh, let's go ahead and do this, and then we just got to flip the battery switch. There we are. All right, perfect. Um, let me do, where is it? Uh, there it is. So if anybody uh, wants to join the Discord, here is the link, if I can get this to work. Come on, there we go. Oh, come on. All right, there's the link to the Discord right here. Uh, let me put my hours in on FS Hub. Two hours and 59 minutes, so almost a three hour flight. Um, it says we flew for six six minutes and 20 seconds in the night, but I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to count it all under the day. Um, let's see. Where is my... There it is. Do, 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 do. Uh, it's down at the bottom here. Oops. Hopefully everybody enjoyed today's flight. We had a few hiccups along the way with the time, but that's all right. It happens. At least we didn't have any other major issues. <laughs> there it is right there. And we departed from WMKA. Oops. Eleven twenty five UTC. Oops, went to WSAP at fourteen 
1925. Submit. There we go. I'll put the put the uh, pictures in there. Um, so anyway, yep, that will be it for today, folks. Thank you all for coming in. We'll be back tomorrow in the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan and the lovely Pan Am livery uh, departing from Gainesville, Florida, heading to Augusta, Georgia. Um, do join us for that if you so desire. I will see you all then. Do enjoy the rest of your Wednesday morning, afternoon, evening, early Thursday, depending on where you are in the world. I have been and always shall be your host and pilot, Uncle B. Until tomorrow, peace, live long and prosper.